Operating under a restrictive policy for the last eight years certainly has encouraged uh, a degree of outside-the-box thinking. Uh, to every cloud there's a silver lining, and I, I hesitate to say that the President's restrictions were responsible for these breakthroughs in direct cell reprogramming, um, but no doubt this, uh, this major breakthrough has in fact emerged in a setting where we were otherwise compromised in the, uh, the types of science we could do with embryonic cells. But it's important to realize that the breakthroughs in direct cell reprogramming are built upon the foundation of embryonic stem cell biology. The new induced pluripotent stem cells, the ones where we can make any patient's skin cells back into an embryonic-like state, is very exciting, but it doesn't answer all of our questions in science. The embryonic stem cells remain the gold standard. We've studied them in mice for 30 years, in humans for 10. We've only had the induced pluripotent cells for two years, so we have much less experience. We are certainly hopeful that they'll do everything that we know the embryonic stem cells can do, but we remain to prove that point. There are also many very important questions that relate to the earliest stages of human development. These are questions that are absolutely germane to issues like birth defects, human fertility and infertility, and some kinds of cancer. We'll never get at those questions by studying reprogrammed skin cells. We need to go to the early human embryo to be able to understand those, those issues. The liberalization of federal funding under the new Obama plan will be exciting and it will offer us more support for carrying this vision forward, but it won't provide us all the resources that we need. Unfortunately, the National Institutes of Health isn't particularly effective at funding this very risky translation of bench research to the bedside. And there are lots of resources that we still need to go to the philanthropic community to fulfill. So with a combination of this enhanced federal support and the visionary support of philanthropists, we hope to be able to put together the very, very considerable sums of money it's going to take us to realize this goal, this $60 million, seven-year goal of getting stem cells into patients.